Hi guys. <laughs> it's not my usual enthusiasm when starting out one of these videos. This is going to be a tough video to do and it is going to be a tough thing to say out loud. Um, I'm already getting teared up. So in February of 2020, I was awarded the Janet Arnold Award from the Society of Antiquaries of London. The award was a £5,000 grant, which is, well, <laughs> when I wrote the grant, it was worth about $6,500 US dollars. Um, that changed, and we'll get to that in a second. So I received a grant to be able to travel to the United Kingdom as well as Germany to be able to go to about five or six different museums, treasuries, repositories to um, do a visual analysis and then whenever possible a microscopic analysis of printed textiles that dated up through the Middle Ages. Um, I of course was super excited about this grant and very proud and more than anything I was excited about what it meant for the world of textile archaeology and for the world of block printing. Um, and I cried a lot and I jumped up and down a lot as would be expected. I then signed all of the contractual things and I waited for the money to arrive. And while I was waiting for the money to be transferred to my bank, coronavirus hit here in the States. Um, about a week maybe 10 days later the money finally cleared and interestingly instead of it being about 6500 US dollars it was only 5500 US dollars close to 5600 so I lost about $900 because the market plummeted um, however I had a very generous friend who loves my research and they were willing to make up that difference so I thought okay great so hopefully if this stuff clears up um, that person will help make up the difference. I'm still going to go to Europe for at least two weeks, if not a full month, depending on how far I can stretch those dollars and maybe how much more I can fundraise. And we are going to get some things done that have never been done before. And it's about time that they are. And uh, I don't need to tell you that this thing is not over and is probably far from over. So... The Society of Antiquaries of London makes it very clear in the application process that you can never ask for a deferral of your grant. Now, I have not reached out to them quite yet to say, hey, <laughs> worldwide pandemic, can there be an exception made? Um, but they're a fantastic organization, and I might be willing to do that if I think there's some way around it. But here is the catch, and here's the complication. When I was writing this grant and doing all the planning and talking to all the museums and treasuries and repositories that I would need to get permission to come visit, um, it was made also very clear to me that the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum of London was going to be closing their central storage facility, particularly the one that hosts like all the textiles when you want to go see. They're going to be closing, I think, December 18th of 2020 to begin a massive reconstruction project, which has been years in the planning, years in the fundraising, years in the process. And they will not have any of their textile stores available or really stores of anything else that is in storage available for public or research perusal until at least spring of 2023. So, even if the Society of Antiquaries would have been so kind as to give me a proper extension sometime into next year, hoping that even by then it would have cleared up, um, it probably wouldn't have worked. Now, the V&A Museum is not the be-all, end-all of textile printed textile research. It is not the only place that I could be doing it. And there are a number of other places where I could do it, but it is a very important place in the history of printed textiles because some of the earliest authenticated samples of printed textiles and probably the biggest, juiciest, most wonderful collection of authenticated printed textiles is at the v &A Museum. But of course, over the last couple of months in the hours and hours of boredom and not anything to do, I started thinking, okay, well, how can I possibly save this grant? I mean, given what's going on, perhaps I can 
propose an alternate budget with the same basic scope and different places to study at. So I started looking at um, my spreadsheets of where are all the extant, best extant textiles that are printed found. And actually there's a couple of museums, several, five or six easily. There is the Met Museum in New York. There is the Cooper Hewitt Museum. There is the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Uh, the Rhode Island State Design Museum. Um, oh, the Cleveland Museum of Art. I'm in Ohio. I should remember that one. Um, and one or two others that have, oh, uh, Dumberton Oaks in Washington, D.C. Now, theirs are more resist dyed, but still important to the overall field of block printing. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I can reach out to those museums and see if I can get permissions from them to go there to study the textiles that they have doing all the same things that I had proposed to doing in Europe, but instead doing it here in the States. That's probably not going to happen. I'm, and please, I am not blaming anybody. I am not trashing anybody by any means. But the Met Museum recently um, announced another, I think like 170 or 200 people were laid off, were, um, they voluntarily retired um, some just quit because they knew how bad the situation was. So basically, there you have a reduction in force. Last I heard was about 14% again after all the people that were already laid off in like March and April. And I've reached out to them, but I haven't heard back from them. And I'm not surprised. They're overwhelmed. They're trying to keep their doors open. I'm sure they're trying to work with funders. And kind of the last thing that's I'm sure that important to them in this moment of crisis is some girl that wants to come take a look at their stuff. Uh, same thing for Cleveland Museum of Art. I have reached out to them a couple of times. I have not heard back from them. I've reached out to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, um, but they said they're not even reopening. That's Oh, that's the other thing. So LA LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, is not even scheduled to reopen at this time. The only two that are tentatively are the Cleveland Museum of Art and the Met. Uh, the Met is hoping to reopen on August 29th, pending city and state approval. And then the Cleveland Museum of Art opened, I think, July 3rd, sometime in the end of June or early July. But again, I have to imagine that they are under woefully understaffed. They have massive reduction in the revenue that's going out to have somebody stay with me for the day or two or three that it would take me to study all those textiles would probably be a resource that they cannot spend at this time and I get it but I'm I'm just you know trying to be creative and resourceful and like what can I possibly do how can I save this grant is it worth it for me and is it if I'm being a good steward of steward of the uh granting agencies monies, the Society of Antiquaries of London, am I being a good steward by proposing these things? Will they still get the same value and will I get the same value that I can then share with everybody in doing that? And I felt like if I could get to four or five of these museums here in the States, then yes, I could. And it would be a reduced, it would not be the full um, 5,000 pounds, whatever <laughs> the current equivalent is. Um, but I thought, okay, maybe I can propose something alternate. The other thing that I have been doing to try to solve, to save, to redeem any possible way that this could happen is, this, this is a long shot, I really wanted to see this happen. Um, I reached out to the UK Embassy in the United States and the US Embassy in the UK. Because right now the travel restrictions do prevent most people from going over there. However, in the current proposed travel ban that is being enforced by the EU with the UK as a signatory added on to it, travel for the purposes of study is permitted. Great, right? Fantastic. Now, does that mean I'm a university student, so I should be able to go to Oxford? Does that mean I'm a researcher and I have a research grant and I should be able to go over there? That's not very clear and that's why I was trying to reach out to the embassies and I also reached out to the British, basically border, border patrol or border protection equivalent department. 
and trying to get a hold of anybody there is virtually impossible. Again, I, I, it, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny and really sad. Um, and I don't blame anybody. It's just a circumstance that sucks. And I want to say right here, and hopefully this will make me stop crying. There are far worse things that I could be facing than boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, you lost your grant. Or you weren't able to see it through. You know, people are losing their lives. People are losing their houses. Um, people are losing their jobs, which is devastating. So I acknowledge that this is a very privileged thing. <laughs> but also my pain is, is relative to me, right? So I... Um, my heart breaks for anybody that is losing more than I am losing, and I, there are many more people and many more important things happening. But this is the update as to what's going on with me. So I haven't heard from any of the embassies. I've also reached out to the V&A Museum, who is um, beginning to reopen, and they're starting to set everything in motion. I reached out to their storage uh, facility. It's the Cloth, Cloth Workers and Textile Research Center, I think, is what is being closed in December not being reopened until spring of 2023. So like I said, they're closing down. So even trying to get an extension or a deferral of the grants, I mean, a deferral into next year, I could see asking the society, the society being, sure, we'll give you another six months. But if I can't get this done by December 18th, it's not happening because I highly doubt that they're going to just defer the grant for three whole years while I'm sitting on their money. Um, although I'm going to email them soon and offer to them to um, to put it in an escrow if they're willing. I mean, if they're willing to defer for three years, I will protect their money. I will put it in some escrow, and <laughs> we will hope that I will have no problems reaffirming my permissions at that time. And you know that I mean that would be an ideal thing. The other thing is obviously I can reapply, and certainly I think that if I am doing the responsible thing and communicating with the grant agencies, which I'm going to be doing, by the time this posts up, I will have contacted the grant agency and we will just start talking about, okay, what are the next steps? Do we call it now? Do we wait until the end of the year and then give the money back? If there's a way for them to use that money for other things, then I'm happy to return the money. If they're willing to defer, uh, if they're willing to defer into six months of 2021 to do possibly a U.S. tour of these museums. And the hope is that the U.S. starts reopening if things don't go sideways, which is a distinct possibility. Not getting into politics, but if we're just being, we're being science-based here, we don't know that this is over even in by the spring or summer of 2021. So that's where I'm at. I've kind of flailed every which way trying to save this. I don't think I'm going to be able to save this. Um, I will reach out again to all of the agencies and treasuries and museums and departments and whatever to see if they can help this little girl <laughs> make her dream come true and do this study. If not, um, if I don't hear back from them in another week or two, I will... Well, I probably concurrently I'm going to finally reach out because I've already done one round of reaching out. So I will reach to, out to the Society of Antiquaries of London and just say, you know, I want to be um, responsible and a good steward of your money. And here's what I've tried to do if you guys are willing to wait until, you know, October or November to see if maybe I can get in to London to do this. The other interesting thing is, and this is the, another thing that I've been exploring behind the scenes, how can I make this happen? So... Even if the embassy says, yes, you can come in, we'll give you a, a paper and we'll make sure that Border Patrol knows that, yes, your study, whatever, is covered under this. Great. And even if the uh, V&A Museum says, yes, fantastic, you know, we will figure out a way if you can get here. We'll figure out a way for you to get to see these things, whether it's by December or even, you know, we set those things aside and we don't put them in the permanent off-site storage until later. I don't know. So even if those things can line up... <laughs> Right now, if I get into the United Kingdom, I have to quarantine for 14 days. And I have to figure out how to pay for that for 14 days. And also, I'm not entirely sure, like, where can I quarantine? If you, so if you fly into a country, does 
their customs department or their border patrol go, sure, you can take a taxi to that hotel, but you better not leave that hotel for 14 weeks. Well, then how do I eat? Am I getting room service the entire time? Am I, do they Can they deliver groceries to me in a hotel room? Am I finding some kind of host family in London to, <laughs> or, or somewhere near London to let me stay in one of their bedrooms for 14 days and that I just do lots and lots of block printing research? I don't know. It's complicated, and <clears throat> this is the reason why I haven't given much of a formal update. I know I've talked to a couple of people about it, and I have said some things on some of our live streams, and and uh, so I've made mention in a couple of the videos, but I've been wanting for a while to give you all an update. But part of it was like I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to tell you guys the things that I was doing and then have it fall. Th I, I was afraid to say it out loud. Because, you know, when you say things out loud, it makes it very real. But this is the whole story. This is everything that I've been going through since March. The super bittersweet thing was that last week I got my passport. And I was like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. It was the same week. I think the day I got my passport was the day that my RSS feed popped up, like, and the Met Museum lays off another 200 employees, or ish, that approximate number of people. So, I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Kick me while I'm down. So, what are the silver linings? We gotta focus on the silver linings. The silver lining is that hopefully I will build a strong relationship with the Society of Antiquary of London, and they will very strongly consider me in the future when things reopen to be able to go over to the United Kingdom and Germany in three or more years. Um, the silver lining is that probably before then, uh, the domestic repositories, treasuries, and museums will start to reopen, and I will be able to do some of this very important research with a number of authenticated, and, and some fakes, like I do want to do some of the Ferrer fakes, I'm definitely going to take a look at and see kind of what Donald King saw in the 1960s. Um, but in the meantime, I will have time to do other research here stateside. It will not be funded by the Society of Antiquaries of London. And so um, some of it, like I can drive to Cleveland for a day or three and I could probably find somebody's house to crash at. And I could probably find somebody's house to crash at in New York and maybe even LA. I have more resources in New York. So, like, there will be some expenses for me to get to some of these repositories, but I might do some fundraising in the future. We'll see. I hate asking for money, but I think people are excited enough. And it's not for me. It's for, it's for science. It's for research. It's for knowledge. It's for the love of this hobby. And you guys get the goods and the information and the deets, you know, too. So, stop crying. Stop crying. Silver linings. Hopefully I will build a good relationship and get this grant again in the future. Hopefully I will be able to continue doing research both at home, that is a given, but also as well as um, going to local repositories like Cleveland Museum of Arts, the Met Museum, Cooper Hewitt Museum, um, Dumberton Oaks, Rhode Island State Design Museum, and the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. That's my like that's my to-do list over the next three years, guys, until I can get into the United Kingdom v &A's Museum in London. And I have permission to go to places in Germany, too. But that, if, we're being, if I'm being honest, the most valuable place, singular, singular place, the most valuable singular place to do research is probably at the v &A Museum to start. Well, not to start. It's the most valuable singular place. The other silver linings is I will learn more about the process of doing the visual analyses as well as the microscopic analysis um, with my microscopes so that when I get to the United Kingdom and I am like I am touching or this close to touching these textiles, I don't screw anything up. <laughs> you know, there's always that like uh, that fear that um what do they call that imposter syndrome right like you know, what if I do the wrong thing what if I breathe the wrong way what if I accidentally break something so 
So I'll, I will feel more confident once I get over the United Kingdom to do this. Um, and this other silver lining is that earlier this year, when coronavirus hit and the pandemic started, my son Oliver was not with me for three months. It just so happened that he was with his father in Indiana when everything hit. And because Lothar works in a nursing home, we decided to keep Oliver there for three months. So I did think once we finally got Oliver back, I thought, oh my God, I've already missed three months of Oliver's life. Yes, there was, you know, daily video conference calls, but I thought I didn't get to hug my child for three months. And now I'm going to be going away for at least another month to Europe later this year. Maybe that's what I was thinking. In maybe May, May and June rather. So the other silver lining is that I don't lose a total of four months with my son in the year 2020. So if there are other silver linings that I'm forgetting or not realizing and not seeing, tell me because this hurts and it's hard, but I think that it'll be okay. We will keep trudging along. We will keep doing research. We will keep sciencing and we will keep sharing everything that we love and that we are excited about, whether it has to do with block printing or anything else. So that's the update. Love you all. Sorry, this is kind of a somewhat depressing post, but that's what's been going on. If something big happens, if something changes, um, I'll let you know. But otherwise, once this is all finally concluded, once I either get the deferral, um, return the money, put the money in, in, in escrow or whatever we end up doing, um, the Society of Antiquaries of London and I, I will let you know. So there you have it. I love you guys. I love that you are excited about this stuff and that you support me and support us. And I'm sorry, this is the better news, but I think everybody gets it. <laughs> everybody gets it. And it can't be helped. So just deal with it.